Hello and welcome back to part 2 of Layers Demystified. In the previous video, we looked at the basics of layers and how groups work. In this video, we will dig a bit deeper into groups and introduce clipped child layers. So let's get back to our silence is golden image. Let's have a look at the top group. Here we have a pixel layer with on top of it two adjustments. As mentioned in the previous video, once a group has a content, in this case the pixel layer, the adjustments will only apply to the content. One thing to keep in mind is that if the blend mode of the group is not set to pass through, the blend mode of the last pixel or the image layer will be ignored and treated as normal. Let me demonstrate that. Currently, the blend mode of the group is set to overlay. See what happens when I change the blend mode to pass through. The lips get this greenish color. What is happening? Well, it is because the blend mode of the pixel layer is set to overlay. When the blend mode of the group is set to pass through, it will apply the layers from the bottom up to the layers below. With as note that the adjustments will only apply to the content of the group. Whereas if we put the group itself to overlay, the adjustments first will be applied and then it will be blended in overlay with the layers below, which creates a different end result. Basically, when you set the blend mode of a group to pass through, it will use the layer hierarchy as if the group does not exist, but the adjustments will be masked to its content. I can quickly show this by ungrouping this group. As you see, now the adjustments are applied to all the layers below, but if I mask them only to the lips, we get the same effect. I already had saved a mask for the lips, so let me add the mask to these two adjustment layers. As you see right now, we get the exact same result. Let's undo the steps so we get our initial group back. The nice feature of groups is that I can add multiple pixel layers and these will also be considered as the content so the adjustments will also be applied to them. For example, I can paint a similar effect on the eyes. If the added pixel or image layer contains pixels overlapping pixels from the layers below in the group, it will be blended in with the selected blend mode. So in this case, this pixel layer where I paint with black will affect the lower pixels from the lips. We can also move it above the adjustments, so the adjustments will not get applied to it. Groups are really powerful, and understanding them will help you to achieve the effect you want. Now let's talk about clipped child layers. Instead of using a group with a single pixel or image layer, we can also use clipped child layers. Let me remove the pixel layers I just added and ungroup this layer. Just like with a group, if we want these two adjustments only to apply to the pixel layer, we can add them as clipped child layers. We can do this by dragging and dropping the adjustments on top of the name of the layer. Awesome! We get the same result as with the group. Basically, a layer with clipped child layers is nothing else than grouping a single pixel or image layer. Well, almost. That only applies as long as you have adjustments only. If I would add a pixel layer as a clipped child and paint on the eyes, it will not have any effect. And this is exactly the reason why it is called a clipped child. The child layers are clipped to the parent, meaning anything added as a child will only affect the pixels of the parent. In other words, clipped to the parent. So adding a pixel layer and painting on the eyes will have no effect. It is outside the pixel range of the parent, which is only the lips. If I select the move tool and move the pixel layer so that it starts overlapping the lips, the pixel layer will get applied, but only to the pixels of the parent. 
This is the major difference with a group. In a group, as you might remember, there is no clipping applied for the pixel or image layers. Now, the interesting part is the order how the child layers are processed. It might feel unnatural first, but the layers are processed from the bottom up, just like the rest of the layers in the layers panel. The lowest child will be applied first to the parent, so in this case the HSL adjustment is applied first, followed by the recolor. Think of it as a group, but with the difference that the content is not at the bottom, but is the parent. So why would you use clipped child layers if you can use groups, especially if you are only using adjustments? My answer for that would be organization. By using the adjustments as clipped child layers makes your document more readable. You can immediately see in the layers panel what is happening. Especially once you start having groups in groups, the readability of your document gets complex. And by using child layers, you can lower that complexity. As you also have seen, they do not replace each other. Both have their use cases. My advice would be to use clipped child layers when applying adjustments to a single layer and use groups if your adjustments would need to apply to multiple layers. In the last and the final video of this series, we will have a look into clipping layers and how they are different compared to clipped child layers. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more interesting Affinity tutorials. Keep safe and keep being creative. Until the next video.